While every Harry Potter movie, and really any movie adaptation, suffers from leaving points from the book out, Goblet of Fire takes it to the next level, excluding entire story elements and characters. But even through its flaws, we still get a good Harry Potter movie. Hey everyone, my name is Nathan, welcome to Hail. This summer I am talking all about Harry Potter. Last week I talked about The Prisoner of Azkaban, today I am talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now with each of these videos, I don't like solely treating them as a movie review for each movie. Rather, I like talking about my nostalgic experiences with it, what it means to me, how it connects to me. This video for the movie Goblet of Fire will be different than any other video I've done so far in the series. I try not to focus a ton on the book to movie adaptation because that's not my real focus for the series, but seeing as how I don't have too many nostalgic connections with Goblet of Fire, I am actually going to focus on the book to the movie adaptation. I don't think I have to warn about spoilers because the movie has been out for over 15 years and the book has been out even longer, but for what it's worth I will be comparing the two. First off, this was the first movie of the Harry Potter series to be rated PG-13. And I clearly remember the buzz going around that, oh my gosh, did you hear the new Harry Potter movie is going to be PG-13? I wonder what's going to be in it. I also remember that when the movie was coming out, there was a, a lady who worked at my school. I don't know if she was a lunch lady or a custodian. I don't think she was a teacher, but she worked in my elementary school. She made the front page of our local town's newspaper because she bought her tickets like a week or two early. Right when they went on sale, she bought her tickets and her and her friend made the front page and I remember we all thought she was like this celebrity because she made the newspaper for some reason I just remember that and then as far as any other memories I did play this on the Xbox it's really funny every one of these videos except for the first one I guess I've mentioned my connection to the Xbox video games I'm gonna warn you right now this is the last one that I really have memories of when it came to five through seven I actually didn't really play those games on the Xbox or on any video game console for that matter but I have many memories of playing Goblet of Fire and enjoying it too because this was like the first Harry Potter video game that was multiplayer. You could have up to three players. You could play as Ron, Hermione, and Harry. The three of them would go on adventures around Hogwarts and do different tasks to earn different prizes and whatnot. It was really fun. We all had our roles. Like I was always Harry, my older sister was Ron, and my younger sister was Hermione. And together we were unstoppable. Although our torment to video game Hermione continued on from the Prisoner of Azkaban. And so there's a certain part of Hogwarts where there's like a jail cell in this certain room. And so what we would do is we would switch our character to Hermione, walk into the jail cell, have it closed, and then switch to Harry and run away from her so that she's trapped in the jail cell and she can't follow us anymore. But because it's a video game, right when you enter into a new room, she's like right there with you. It's actually quite scary. In this one, you could do this spell where you can lift rocks up with your wands. And what we would do is we would lift it up and hover it over Hermione and then release the spell. So the rock, it wasn't a rock, it was a huge boulder. It would just fall on her and she'd fall to the ground and her jelly beans would fly out and then we would collect them to get prizes. It sounds really messed up, but I swear it was all in good manners, all in good fun. We had a blast. Now, when it comes to the movie itself, even seeing it in 2005, I can't lie. It, it just felt a little off. Now, don't hate me for what I'm about to say, but I actually read all the books after I saw all the movies. It was mostly because I was young growing up and I just looked forward to seeing each movie. I guess I just had the mentality that I'll read the books after I see all the movies. So what I'm getting at is as a kid, I couldn't compare the book to the movie, but the movie still felt a little off. We're introduced to this idea of a world Quidditch cup. Like that sounds so exciting. And then they skipped the entire Quidditch World Cup scene. Like even as a kid, I was like, whoa, like why didn't we see some Quidditch happen? And then I remember not wanting the movie to end. The third task is so short. And so as a kid, I loved the first task. I loved the second task. They were both long and enjoyable, but the third task just seemed so short to me. The only memory I have of actually seeing the Goblet of Fire in theaters is Cedric Diggory's death because I remember watching the movie and I was like this Cedric guy he's a cool guy I like him and then he dies and I'm like what the heck come on I like this guy. So rather than just bash on Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire I realized that there are a lot of fans out there who actually really like this movie and so what I have told myself I have to do is for every complaint I have for the movie I have to say something nice about the movie too. So this should be interesting. Let's see how it goes. I already mentioned they skipped the World Cup, which was really frustrating because there's a whole entire chapter devoted to it in the book, and it's exciting too. It's cool to see them cheering for two teams, and Harry gets to watch Quidditch from the sidelines. He's not actually playing, so it was just an interesting new perspective, and the way they set it up in the movie, it seemed like it could have been a really exciting scene. Now, I'm actually going to use that as the pro to the Quidditch World Cup scene. They set it up beautifully. The stadium looked amazing, even better than I could have imagined had I read this book before seeing the movie, if that makes any sense. I also loved the look of all the tents outside. There are so many people. It was just a very well set 
setup scene. And that's even more so why I'm a little disappointed we didn't see any footage. Plus it is a good introduction to Victor Crumb. A con, the entire death mark scene is completely different than the book. Wingy is gone. Barty Crouch Jr. is on site? Like what? Harry watches him do the spell that, you know, shows the death mark in the sky, which doesn't happen at all in the book. Like in the book, if you remember, Harry loses his wand and it's later discovered that Winky, the house elf, is blamed for casting the death mark spell. Although you find out later that Winky actually didn't cast the spell. It was Barty Crouch Jr. You just don't see Barty Crouch Jr. do it. You're not even supposed to know that Barty Crouch Jr. is alive. But the movie completely changes that whole entire scene. But a pro to something that happens around the same time is the look of the Death Eaters. The scene of them marching around and destroying the tents and attacking people genuinely frightened me as a kid and even to this day it's really kind of just chilling to see. I think the way they made the Death Eaters look is really scary. So good on ya. Take my compliments. You won't get a lot of that. Actually, you will because I'm trying to balance it out. Anyways, so another con. Uh, the next scene, they're on the Hogwarts Express and Hermione tells Harry to write to Sirius about his scar hurting. So Harry writes a letter to Sirius and he addresses the letter to Sirius Black. Do you not see the problems with this? In the books and in the movie, Sirius Black is still a very wanted criminal. Only Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Dumbledore know that he is an innocent man at the end of Prisoner of Azkaban, meaning that during Goblet of fire, he is still very much wanted. So why would you write a letter addressed to Sirius Black? In the book, they address it to Snuffles because even some people know about his nickname Padfoot. And so like how hard would it have been to just address the dang letter to Snuffles? Come on, write it to Snuffles. A pro about Goblet of Fire. Brendan Gleeson is amazing as Mad-Eye Moody. A con, keep the Hogwarts song in the movie. It's a deleted scene and I think it is absolutely hilarious and it segues perfectly into Mad-Eye walking into Hogwarts for the first time. They deleted this scene and actually it's not even in the book if I remember right. I think it's in like the first book I wanna say, but they decided to film a scene for it in the fourth movie. Why did they film the scene and then delete it from the movie if it was a scene that was originally in the first book? Like just keep it in this room. Look. Keep it in the movie, keep it in the movie. I love the look that Malfoy gives to Crab when Crab is like obnoxiously singing. And then I love when they also like waving their hands when they're talking about Hogwarts. And the foreign schools who are visiting think that Hogwarts is absolutely insane. It's just like such a funny scene. I don't know why they cut it. It's like 20 seconds long, come on, just keep it in. A pro to Goblet of Fire, the Yule Ball is absolutely stunning. I think the way the dance looks, how it's very wintry and there's snow is just amazing. It's cool that they have a wizarding band in the movie. Everyone is dressed perfectly. The costume design is great. I love how each character has their own distinct costume and you know they didn't just throw on you know everyone in a black dress robe and all the girls in like a pink dress no like each character has their own distinct outfit and i think the yule ball was handled excellently a con what's up with the scene with karkaroff sneaking into the great hall where the goblet of fire is like there's this scene where he menacingly walks into the goblet of fire and like looks around and like shuts the doors behind him but why are they including that scene the only thing i can think of is they want to lead the audience to believe that karkaroff is the one who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire, but clearly it wasn't Karkaroff. It was Barty Crouch Jr. pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody. And so why did they even include that scene of Karkaroff? Because it contradicts itself. The only logical thing I can think of, and feel free to comment if you have a different explanation, but the only logical thing I can think of is that Barty Crouch Jr. uses Polyjuice Potion to turn into Karkaroff so that if he were to be caught, Karkaroff would be blamed. But this doesn't happen in the book or anything. And so that's such a big stretch and for it to not even address it in the movie, I just question why is it even included in the first place? It makes no sense. Ray Fiennes is amazing as Voldemort. We don't see too much of him, but this was the first movie that we really saw him act as Voldemort. And I think he did a great job. He continues to do a great job in this series, but for this movie to be his, his first appearance in the role, I have to pay some kudos to him. A con. The scene with Moody doing the licky thing after the second task where he's like, you know? Sorry you had to see that. Don't spoil it. Come on. That like gives it away that it's Barty Crouch Jr. Because in like the scene before we saw Barty Crouch Jr. do that. They're so obvious that Barty Crouch Jr. is moody in this movie. And I know I've seen the movie like 50,000 times. And so like, who, why am I complaining about spoilers? But I just, I don't know. I don't like that way of hinting at the audience who hasn't read the book that Barty Crouch Jr. is moody. I, it, it just bothers me for some reason. A pro to Goblet of Fire. The visual effects are amazing. Like the dragons look great. You really only see the Hungarian horn tail, but you see the other ones at a distance when Harry's looking at them in the Forbidden Forest. So that's pretty cool. But also like the mer people and the water look great. The way Voldemort looks is really well done. I can't really think of anything in this movie that 
doesn't look visually appealing. A con to the movie, the third task is wasted. I kind of mentioned this earlier when I watched it for the first time as a kid. Even as a kid, not having read the book, I was disappointed by the third task and how short it was. Like in the book, Harry encounters many obstacles. He fights what he thinks is a Dementor, but it's actually a Bogart. And so he uses the ridiculous charm or maybe he uses Expelliarmus. I can't remember. But anyways, he fights a Bogart, which is like portraying itself as a Dementor. And then he also comes in contact with a giant spider who attacks him and bites his leg. And so he actually has a very badly wounded leg when he gets out of the tri tournament. On top of that, he comes across a Sphinx and he has to answer a riddle. And if he answers incorrectly, the Sphinx will attack him. If he answers correctly, the Sphinx will let him through and he will be that much closer to the tri Wizard Cup. And so there's all these cool little things that they exclude from the movie. I will say that it's cool how in the movie, how the maze like moves around and really confuses the players. I think that that was well done. I just would have liked to see more villainous creatures attack the contestants make it a little bit more exciting. A pro though, the first task is done excellently in the movie. In fact, I think the first two tasks are even better than the first two tasks in the book. I'll focus on the first task specifically. In the book, Harry enters the arena with a dragon and he does the same thing, Accio Firebolt, the broomstick comes, but he never leaves the arena. It's mostly him just kind of flying around. He really just jukes out the dragon because he makes the dragon believe that he's flying up. So the dragon flies out of the way. He then swoops down really fast and gets the egg. Whereas the movie, there's this whole sequence where he takes the dragon away with him. And it's really exciting to see him fly around Hogwarts. It's not really entertaining for the people who are watching the tournament because they don't see anything that happens, but for the people who are watching the movie, it's really entertaining. A con, Cedric Diggory isn't portrayed very well in the movie. And what I mean by that is it seems like when people are wearing the Potter Stinks, uh, Cedric rules, whatever the buttons say, Cedric is a lot more like chill with it in the movie. Whereas in the book, it seems like he's a little bit more against it. Also in the final task, when they both see the tri of Cup, Harry and Cedric, they both run at it. It's not only running, it's them like, holding each other back, pushing each other into the hedges. Like they are aggressively going for the cup. In the book, it's completely different. Harry has just been attacked by a spider. His leg is bad, so he can't run to the cup. And so Cedric could easily run to it. In fact, Harry even says, hey man, it's all about whoever gets to the cup first. Clearly you can run faster than me right now. So go to the cup, you deserve it, you deserve to win. But because Cedric has a good heart and he is grateful that Harry helped him so much up to this point in the games, he confidently says with no regrets, no, I'm not getting it, the cup is yours. And it's then that Harry says, how about let's get it together? And so Cedric's like, okay, you're on. So they walk together over to the cup and Cedric actually helps Harry because he's limping. And that's when they kit the cup together. The movie portrays Cedric as more of a greedy person who just wants the fame and glory. And I feel like it kind of goes against his Hufflepuff self, but a pro to the movie, Robert Pattinson as Cedric is amazing. I love that casting. I think he does a great job even though the character is not the best adaptation to me, I still think that he gives an amazing performance. And it's cool seeing him in a Harry Potter movie and then seeing him in all the movies he's done since then. Another con, the exposition scene towards the end of the movie is not well done at all. And it could have been way better if they had just included the story elements with Winky, Barty Crouch Jr., Ludo Bagman, all of that stuff could have made the exposition scene at the end a lot better. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of how Winky and Barty Crouch Jr. are more involved into the story because I've talked enough about the book to the movie. But let me just say, if you haven't read the book, there's an entire sequence, an entire side story that they just take completely out of Goblet of Fire movie. It just complements the story so much better as to why Barty Crouch Jr. is doing what he does and how he got to that point. It's really exciting. There's a whole house self involved that isn't even in the movie. Just read the book. If you have read the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A pro to Goblet of Fire, Michael Gambon was growing on me. And even at this age, when I see him in this movie, I'm already used to him being Dumbledore. It's no longer weird like, oh, where's Richard Harris? Like I'm already used to seeing this actor play Dumbledore. And so that's a pro to me. A con, they left out the fact that Rita Skeeter is an animagus. In the book, there are so many different instances where Rita is getting these stories for the Daily Prophet. And so many people are wondering, how the heck is she getting these stories? We talked about that privately where no one was around. But you find out at the end of the book that she's an unregistered animagus and she can turn into a beetle. This is really bad because if you're an animagus, meaning that you can turn into an animal, you 
have to be registered with the Ministry of Magic. Well, Hermione finds out about this, that she's an unregistered animatus, and she basically blackmails her into stop writing false articles about Harry Potter and other people because she's ruining so many lives. I think this is a cool side storyline because it shows how Rita is so good at getting the stories that she does get. I will say that of all the complaints I've made, this is probably not the biggest complaint because in order to include this in the movie, this little sideline, they would have also had to include much more stories that Rita makes up throughout the story. And because they leave all of that out of the movie, it would probably just add too much fluff to the movie. And so I can kind of see a little bit more why they excluded this from the movie. But still, I'm a fan of the book. I wanted to include it. My pro to this is the character Rita Skeeter is good enough. I'm glad that they at least included her character because she makes for some funny scenes, especially when it's her and Harry in the broom cupboard. And I also think the actress, her name escapes me at the moment, but the actress who plays her did a really good job too. What we did get of Rita Skeeter on the screen was good enough for me. Another con, Harry still can't cry in that final scene when he brings Cedric's body back to the, the stadium where all the people are watching. You know, he, he, he still can't cry. I'm sorry. But a pro is at least the three main actors, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, are getting better with each movie. I've never thought that they were bad actors. Even in the first movie, I think that they all give great performances. But with each movie, it seems like they get better and better. I especially love Ron's acting when it comes to his experience with the dress robes and how embarrassed he is to wear the dress robes. I'm not losing sleep over any of this. The movie that we have for Goblet of Fire is still really good. I just think that they missed a lot of opportunities that could have made the movie even better. That's why I wanted to really balance it out and for every bad thing I wanted to say a good thing because at the end of the day this is another Harry Potter movie and I'm grateful for it. Like I will always like it at least for the fact that it's a Harry Potter movie. I will always appreciate it for at least that fact. Anyways that concludes my experience with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, I'm sorry if I completely bashed it. I hope that my pros to my cons at least helped you guys a little bit if you're big fans of the movie. If not, I uh, really don't know what to say. Anyways, stay tuned for next week's video where I talk about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.